Well, hi there. Ah, nothing like the smell of fresh morning freedom. You see the roots popping under the soil? It's inspirational, man. Let me tell you a little story about the ratification of the U.S. Constitution. Did you know two-thirds of Congress is needed to propose an amendment and three-fourths of state legislators must support it for it to be ratified? The National Convention of two-thirds of states can propose an amendment and three-quarters of state legislators must ratify. States initially opposed the document, including Massachusetts, if you can believe that. Massachusetts, one of the most liberal states in the country today, was once a huge uh, opponent of the Constitution because it failed to protect basic political rights, such as freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom of the press. But compromise was achieved by agree agreeing to immediate amendments. <clears throat> Did you know the Federalist Papers persuaded the ratification of the Constitution? Did you know the Bill of Rights is a major example of ratification to the Constitution? Many states had major issues with the Constitution. For example, Rhode Island opposed federal control of currency and was critical of the compromise on the issue of slavery. They resisted ratifying the Constitution until the United States federal government threatened to sever commercial relations with the state. The President and the Supreme Court have no role in directly ratifying the Constitution. Now let me folks tell you another story. See this tree right here? It's an American oak. You can tell by the way it is. But it's also important to understand that there are many compromises, tests, and votes in order to ratify major documents and a very large majority of each vote is needed. It is also important to understand that a very large portion of the time, the reason for ratification is to expand liberties and rights. Now, thank you for coming out and joining my uh, lesson today, and I'll see you around.